Hi everybody, welcome to The Lord is on Your Side. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, it's lovely to have Becky with us tonight. Um, thanks for joining us, Becky. Thanks for having me. Um, Becky has lived in Manchester for 19 years, so she's almost a northerner, but not quite yet. Um, she's married to Paul and they've got two children, um, Sam and Anna. Um, yeah, thanks so much, Becky. She's been a member of our St. Clement's Church family for, oh, how many years, Becky? Oh, I think it must be four and a half. Four and a half years. Um, she, um, yeah, and she's a blessing. So, um, Becky, do you want to tell us something about a time in your life where um, God met with you and um, did some good work? Yes, I would love to. So, um, the time that I want to talk about is almost exactly 10 years ago, uh, when Anna was two and a half-ish and Sam was a few months old. And I'd, I'd suffered with varying degrees of depression, probably since, since childhood really, or certainly in my teens. And it continued to be very much a life controlling, um, life diminishing problem. Uh, and I'd been, I'd been lugging around some heavy baggage for a long time and I was living with some kind of unresolved, long-term, hard circumstances. And I was aware that my life was in the grip of depression um, and I was aware that something had to change, but I just didn't know what to do about it. And I just, I found that depression can be really disconnecting and displacing, like it kind of, it disconnects you and displaces you from from yourself and from others and even from God it, and and I just I knew that really all was not at all well um, and something needed to change I was I was struggling um, with being a mum and with being a wife and just just really with all of life just struggling badly Thanks. That sounds like a pretty hard time. Um, so I'm really curious to know then what scripture was it that God used to um, speak into that and show you that he was on your side? Great. I'm excited to tell you. So the scripture he used was Psalm 84, which I'm going to come to in a moment. Um, but the way that we get there um, is through um, a quiet time that I was having one day in, um, I think it must have been in January coming up for 10 years ago and I was reading Genesis um, and I was reading the bit where Lot is told by the angels to flee for his life um, and it's in Genesis 19 17 I've got it here um, so the angel says to him and his family flee for your lives don't look back and don't stop anywhere on the plane flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. And although these words were spoken to Lot in a very specific set of circumstances, um, God used them uh, strangely, I think, when I look at them um, and beautifully to, to actually to stir hope in me. Somehow through these words, um, I believe that God was saying to me, that I believe he, he, he was calling me out of, of the grip of depression. And I had a very real sense um, that this wasn't something to be done to me, but something that, um, that I was being invited and called to participate in, does that make sense? Yeah. So, but I had no idea how it was gonna happen. So I had this really clear, clear sense, yeah, I'm supposed to flee, um, but I didn't know what that looked like. And so I asked God about it. Um, I prayed about it, um, I thought about it, and I, I, I don't know if it was that later that day or later that week, I can't remember. Um, but I, was, I was reading Psalm 84, and it struck me as I read it that, that I had here in my hands um, an answer to my question, um, how, how do I flee? And specifically verses 3 and 4, which I will read now. Thanks, yeah, I do. Uh, even a sparrow finds a home, 
and the swallow builds a nest and raises her young at a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, what joy for those who dwell in your house, ever praising you. It's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. So, do you want to hear what happened next? Yeah, I guess, how did that sort of, yeah, I guess those two scriptures around um, fleeing and then praising God, maybe I'm punting, it might be that bit. Um, yeah, how did God use those to change that really dark place that you're in? Yeah, so it seemed, it seemed like I was being given just a really clear and simple instruction that I was to make my home and raise my young near to his altar and it just it moved me so much um just this just the tenderness of god i think you know he he i, I felt really well i really felt that he was on my side you know i felt so seen and known and understood you know he knew the cry of my heart that just this wrestled this feeling like i, I don't know how to even live <laughs> properly let alone be a good mum while I'm carrying all of this stuff. Um, so I began to think and pray about well, what, what does that actually mean practically though? So it's quite, it's quite a pretty poetic language, isn't it? Um, so I, I was trying to consider in the realities of everyday life with two little ones and carrying the heavy baggage that I was carrying, um, what does it mean to make my home and raise my young um, near to his altar? So I just I kind of honed in on that phrase near to his altar and I started to think around, you know, the Old Testament and I was just digging in really to what, what, what did that mean then and what could it mean to me and what might God want to be doing? And um, so I started to think well, what, ha what happened and what do we see in the Bible happening at an altar? And we know that um, like animal sacrifices, so sacrifices um, took place at an altar and also worship and praise and thanksgiving and all of that. Um, is that right? I hope so because- That's what the Old Testament's got a lot of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, I just, so I just took that really simply it was as I said as, a, as, a, as these simple instructions um so sacrifice and then obviously I was thinking of like in the, in the New Testament we see in the book of Romans that we're called to be a living sacrifice so I just I interpreted that as an instruction and an invitation you know out of the grip of depression into um sacrificing and serving um my kids um and because you see, for me, and I'm, I'm not saying this is the case for everybody, but for me, depression was a, a really, it had me in a very, very self-centered, self-focused, self-pitying place. And I, I just couldn't push out of it. And so to be given this kind instruction by God through his word to actually just to get up and serve. You know, I'm there saying, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to do this. And for him just to say through his word, just sacrifice just serve just you know do the next thing do the next thing um and then the other side of that was um worship and praise takes place at an altar before the lord um and so i just started very simply speaking out worship and praise to god and so it it, it started to um renew my mind uh, as we see spoken about in the new testament you know, it started to rewrite the script because, again, as I just said, depression was very um, insular, inward-looking, self-pitying, super negative space in my in my head and heart. Um, and so, just to have this really kind invitation to speak out praise and to speak out thanksgiving um, and to cultivate doing that with the kids, and we we got a big chart on the wall where we wrote out praise and thanksgiving stuff together this is a little, as they were getting a little bit bigger um and that that's that's it really very very simply those two instructions um just 
began the journey of walking me out of the grip of depression. Um, and wonderfully, we see um, in verse four, uh, there's a promise in verse four. It says, what joy for those who dwell in your house, ever praising you. And God, God really did do that. He really fulfilled that promise. He, um, he truly walked me out um, of that bleak, dark place into joy by putting into practice um, the reality of those verses. Amazing, huh? Yeah, really amazing. But it strikes me that I guess for lots of people at the minute where we're feeling quite a bleak, dark place, it's cold and dark and we're not allowed into each other's homes. And from what I'm, to correct me if I'm wrong, your circumstances didn't change, but everything changed within you as your mind was renewed by following those instructions from God's word. Yeah, yeah. That's Which right. I guess is relevant, isn't it, to people that just might be feeling, I'm not just heavy at the minute, that yeah. actually often we crave, don't we, a change in our circumstances. Yeah. But maybe there's hope for people with heavy lockdown hearts tonight that actually those, those same tools can be relevant and applied to other people too. Yeah, yeah, big time. And, I, and also, like, I would, I'd want to say sort of into that space of people who are listening who are, who are feeling really heavy, um, that it's, you know, I use the word instruction when I was telling that story, but I also use the word invitation. And, you know, if you're, if you're feeling heavy hearted and downtrodden and um, in those kinds of spaces and, you know, when we're like that, it can be hard to be encouraged and being invited sometimes even to pray more and read the Bible more. It can feel like a weight on us, can't it? But yeah, I just want to encourage people this evening that it is, it's always an invitation uh, into life and joy rather than a you know, a burden that God is putting on us to kind of do these extra things. Um, there's, there's just, there's so much life in, you know, in his word. I can see you're, you're wanting to say something. I've just got a question. So I was struck when you were talking about how you described it as a beautiful invitation. Did it feel like that? Or was, was, was there any wrestle within you of this feels really hard or did, did it, yeah what was what what did you do with that wrestle if there was any um i i honestly can't remember because <laughs> it was 10 years ago rebecca has short long-term memory issues and short-term memory issues yeah but i mean there must have been a wrestle mustn't there because i'm human and so like we do find ourselves sometimes resist resistant to god don't we and yes yeah. but I guess my encouragement there would just be to just, I, it is jogging my memory actually, Jill, because <laughs> I think there were times when I was remembering the instruction to praise, but just, but just feeling nothing. But I just, it seemed such a clear instruction though. You know, it seemed to hold so much promise and I'd seen little glimpses of change that I, that I think there were times, moments like that, where I guess in a way my heart wasn't quite in it or I didn't feel a change in that moment but I just kept doing it really um yeah how that's my other question I get because I guess to know you now I didn't know you at that point in your life it's hard to believe that that was a thing and that the person you described at the beginning um was you how long do you think that process took for God to call you out of that really negative headspace oh that's that's a very good question and a really hard question <laughs> sorry um didn't i didn't warn you about that question i don't know uh oh i i really don't know i don't know because it's it's in a way it's ongoing because even like i'm i'm not um not remotely in the grip of depression anymore and i, and I haven't been like probably probably for eight years so maybe it took a year or I don't know to I, I can't remember I'm making it up but what I would say is that um as I was preparing to share this this evening 
and I was looking at these verses, I just saw it afresh again. I just saw my need for it again because it might not be depression now, but it, but it might be, a, you know, it might be a complaining attitude or, or a judgmental attitude or an ungrateful attitude, you know. It can be all kinds of things that, for which the, the antidote is to worship him, you know, for which the antidote is to get our eyes off ourselves and, and to give him our praise. Um, and yeah, certainly in, in this season where we're feeling really restricted and it's and isolated and it's hard not seeing each other. And on that note, actually, um, another verse that I love from this psalm is verse 10. Uh, it says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. I'll go on. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. And I just, I, I love this phrase and it's become in a way a, a mantra that I say to my heart sometimes just the word better better is one day in your courts and just rubbing in that good truth into my heart when things don't feel okay when I'm not sure about outward circumstances or inward stuff to, to tell myself these truths that who God is and what he does and his choices for our lives are better, so much better, immeasurably better than anything that we could come up with for ourselves. And, you know, when we want to escape this lockdown or whatever it is that we want to do, um, let's try and remember that what, what God has for us, even in the midst, right in the heart of the hardest, most painful trials is, is better. Yeah, th thanks so much, Bex. That's really helpful. Um, is it okay if I pray for us? Please do. Father God, we're, we're so grateful that your word time and again speaks into our hearts, um, shows us the way forward and, and reminds us that you're on our side and that your way is better. Father, we thank you for this story of a freedom that you're working in Becky's heart and Father we thank you that she accepted that gracious invitation to um, be somebody that worships you and Father we thank you for the change that you brought in her through that. Father as life's hard this weekend as we are facing a month of um, being constrained we pray that um, even though we can't we don't have the power to change our circumstances father would you help us to be those who respond to you um, and want to worship you and be grateful for who you are and what you've done father please would you help us and would you lead us and guide us in that and father we want to trust you that you would change our hearts as we do that in Jesus' name Amen. Amen. Thanks so much. Um, good night, everybody, and God bless. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to Your best, your